Sandeep is busy. Sandeep, do you want? So, Shailesh, I'm here. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. fine. Okay, great. Can I ask you something? No, no, I'm at home. Great. That is your favorite topic. Okay. The Avartha topic. The Avartha block. The Avartha blocks. You are giving regularly, right? I'm not PNS guided. Now, it's all ultrasound. Okay, hardly you know, whenever... Because I am a freelancer, I go to different hospitals. I know, no, I, I agree with you. Ultrasound I use now only USG. Oh, okay. You see, start the meeting. Okay, thank you, Rahul, sir. Yeah. Mamta? Yes? You can start the meeting. Okay. Very warm good evening to one and all. On behalf of Prat team and Sancheti Hospital, mm -hmm. I extend a warm welcome to all of you for the fifth series of PRAC webinar. During this pandemic time, to update our knowledge, webinar has become the great source of academic enhancement. I thank our medical director, Dr. Parag Sancheti, academic chief, Dr. Sandeep Divan, our head of department, Dr. Bhartiya De, and all my colleagues for arranging this academic feast. Regional anesthesia has very important role, especially during this COVID pandemic, to avoid GA and for safety of doctors, staff, and patients. So we are presenting here very important block, posterior sciatic nerve block. Sciatic nerve is the largest nerve trunk in the body, and its width is around one centimeter. And its block was first described by a French surgeon, Dr. Victor, in 1920. We are very fortunate and blessed to have with us very highly acclaimed speakers and panelists. Our first speaker is Dr. Shailesh Mulgaukar from Mumbai, who will be talking on PNS and landmark guided sciatic nerve block. Dr. Shailesh is doing his private practice since more than 32 years. His main interest is PNS and now USG guided nerve blocks. He does all hard risk cases with ejection fraction as low as 15 to 20% with lumbar uh, sacral plexus block. Now, I invite Dr. Shailesh, sir, and request to take over the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mamta. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Mamta and Dr. Sandeep Diwan for giving me this opportunity. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about pns guided sciatic nerve block. Uh, not many people give sciatic nerve block regularly because uh, it is uh, much e easier to give a spinal or epidural. Even with for high risk patients, a lot of people give low dose spinal, or epidural, uh, unilateral spinal, and all. But there are uh, some patients whose ejection fraction is quite low, and even if you give very low dose spinal, they usually get hypotension, and then there's a problem. So once you practice the sciatic nerve block, of course, it takes a little longer time. So you have to convince the surgeons and the patients also. So it takes a little longer time to give a sciatic nerve block, obviously, than spinal or even epidural. But once you uh, get used to these blocks, I think you will never give up. And uh, I've been using uh, PNS for quite some time now. Wherever I go, I am a freelancer. So wherever I get an opportunity to use an ultrasound where my name is registered, in, there are four or five hospitals where my name is registered with the PCP entity. There I gave a USG guided or sometimes even a dual block. Uh, now, sciatic nerve, as you all know, that uh, basic nerve supply for the lower limb, uh, there are two plexuses involved and main four nerves involved. The lumbar plexus, which gives rise to the femoral, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and the obturator nerve and the sacral plexus, which is this gives rise to main the sciatic nerve, which is the largest nerve in the body, sometimes one centimeter, even two centimeters thick. So uh, basic anatomy you have to know before giving the block. Now I'm going to talk about PNS guided nerve blocks. So now everybody is using a nerve stimulator, but now because this is a very deep block, if you have the newer versions of the nerve stimulator or even the 
uh, newer versions of needles and all it is much easier to give a block properly and it saves a lot of time now if you can see i used to use this older version of uh, the mouse stimulator where uh, the problem is the frequency is only two so only two stimuli can be given per uh, second and uh, the band width the pulse width it is called it is only 0.1 milliseconds so uh, it is difficult to locate the nerve with this stimulator than with the newer version which i'll come to so before giving any the block with the nerve stimulator you have to check whether the nerve stimulator is working properly so this red is the anode and black is the cathode so you have to touch these two together and then put the nerve stimulator on and then you can see the light blinking here and the tone audio tone also changes so if this nerve stimulator is working properly that means there is some problem in you giving the and locating the nerve so never forget to check this nerve stimulator whether it is working properly sometimes the battery is drained out and all so you will keep Fairness. Pulse width, pulse width, so that it is easier. You will uh, there is less uh, chance of uh, missing the nerve, locate locating the nerve. I will not go into the details of these basics of nerve stimulator. This is a separate topic at all. Then uh, this also has a kilo ohms, which is called as an impedance. So when your nerve enters a vessel by mistake, this kilo ohms doesn't increase much. ideally it should increase to a particular limit and suppose if it enters the uh, fascicular means the perineurium perineurium uh, it is a endoneurium perineurium and epineurium so perineurium means the fascicles are in the perineurium and perineurium is a tight connective tissue so you should never inject into the perineurium epineurium is the outest outermost uh, connective tissue which is expansile so you can inject there and still you can avoid the damage to the axons but if you injecting in the perineurium then this pressure kilo ohms goes to more than double so this you nerve know, stimulator is much safer to use there's more frequency and more kilo ohms the uh, impedance now there are different types of needles available now there are eco friendly needles and uh, with insulated needles and the uh, the current is emitted only from the tip of the needle then these are nerve locators and nerve mappers then this is a pressure regulator where if the pressure while injecting the pressure increases to more than 15 psi that means you should never inject that means you are intraneural and then this is called as a peg percutaneous electrode guidance where there is a uh, tubing through which there is a needle and once you locate the nerve you don't have to remove that and then like a nerve uh, nerve mapper or a nerve locator you have to remove you don't have to remove the uh, no this thing that it is a electrode which has a tunnel which through which a needle is already locked so you just once you locate the nerve you just push the needle in and inject so if all these devices are available it is much easier to give a deeper block like a sciatic block which is a little more uh, advanced block than even the uh, this thing which is quite superficial the brachial plexus block so all these basics if you have these newer uh, versions then you should purchase it it's not they are not very expensive now let us come to the anatomy So as i told you uh, sciatic nerve any uh, surgery of the lower limb if you want to do only under a nerve block then you have to give a lumbar plexus and a sacral plexus block lumbar plexus will uh, block all these three nerves femoral lateral femoral cutaneous and obturator and sciatic nerve block at a highest level where it comes out from the greater sciatic foramen otherwise lot of uh, areas are spared uh, now this basically sciatic nerve it uh, uh, originates from the anterior primary rami of l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 and it is basically there are, there are two branches the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve both are covered by the same perineurium uh, by different perineuriums and they are covered in one connective tissue, tissue sheath called as a paran paraneuron so uh, some give a dual block if the tibial nerve is the most important nerve to be blocked if you block only the part common peroneal nerve then lot of areas are spared so i prefer to locate the tibial uh, the uh, uh, tibial nerve and only the response of the tibial nerve 
some may differ my opinions that uh, tibial nerve i wait till i get a response for the tibial nerve and then usually the common peroneal is blocked so uh, now if you can see this on the right side the lumbosacral trunk the l4 l5 s1 s2 and s3 why i am showing you specifically this is because the superior gluteal nerve this is a nerve which is not a branch of sciatic but it provides innervation to the hip joint so if you give a higher block then the hip surgery can be done but if you give a lower block then usually these areas are spared so you have to give a sacral plexus block not a lower gluteal or subgluteal area blocks now there is one nerve which is called the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve which is again not a branch of sciatic but it comes out from the sacral plexus below the sciatic now this area Uh, this now provides uh, cutaneous supply to the posterior part of the thigh so if you give a block at a lower level like for example popliteal or even subgluteal level lot of times these uh, this nerve is spared and then there is uh, if you tie a tourniquet or there is an incision at the posterior thigh area then that area is spared so if you have to plan accordingly if the the incision is around the uh, posterior part of the thigh or if they are going to tie a tourniquet See, with subgluteal uh, block, tunica can be tied, but the incision is quite painful. So uh, you have to give a higher block if you want to block the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh. Then there is a pudendal nerve also, which can get blocked when you are giving the higher block, and the patient can get paresthesia in the genital area. Now, uh, if you see this, basically there are four landmarks which are most important to give a sciatic nerve block. one is the greater trochanter here the posterior superior iliac spine the sacral sacrum and the fourth is the ischial tuberosity these are the four landmarks which have to be palpable and if one or two are palpable then accordingly you have to plan your block so these four landmarks are very important posterior superior iliac spine the greater trochanter the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity now when you are giving the block you have to think of what surgery is being done so there are osteotomes myotomes and dermatomes so sciatic now supplies everything below the knee means all the bones below the knee all the muscles below the knee and only the cutaneous supply the medial portion is by the saphenous which is a part of the femoral nerve which is a continuation of the posterior branch of the femoral so only this is spared so depending on what surgery it is you have to give the sciatic nerve block accordingly okay so these are osteotomes these are the myotomes and these are the dermatomes now articular branches of sciatic nerve supply both the hip joint and the knee joint muscular branches supply as i told you the posterior uh, posterior part then mainly the hamstrings and uh, all the muscles below the knee and the cutaneous supply so the sciatic nerve emits from the greater sciatic foramen in front of the piriformis this picture is from behind so in front of the piriformis and there are a lot of variation sciatic nerves a lot of muscular branches are given at a higher level sometimes it divides ideally uh, you know it divides usually at about between 6 to 8 cm above the popliteal crease but sometimes it divides at 10 cm also so you can have a partial block if you don't locate the nerves properly so it supplies the muscles the hamstrings the semitendinous is semimembranous is long head of biceps femoris and adductor magnus specifically i want to uh, tell you that the short head of biceps femoris is supplied by the common peroneal nerve and not the tibial nerve so if you block when you are blocking with the nerve stimulator if you are getting twitches of the full hamstring muscles properly then you are stimulating that even the tibial component but you should be aware that if you only the short head of biceps femoris is getting twitched and you inject then only the common peroneal nerve will get blocked and lot of areas supplied by the tibia will get spared so i usually to tell you frankly i don't accept hamstring twitches lot of books have mentioned that you can accept hamstring twitches or even i don't know whether sandeep diwan and all will agree but i always wait till i get the tibial component that means the plantar flexion and inversion which is the end motor response of stimulation to the tibial nerve dorsiflexion and eversion is the end motor response for the common peroneal so because of this anatomical uh, this thing the short head of biceps femoris is supplied by the common peroneal i don't accept as far as possible the hamstring twitches 
I just go a little more medial and until I get the plantar flexion and inversion. So that is why I want to show you this specifically. Now, even this cutaneous supply, if you see, this post posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh supplies a lot of area in the posterior part of the thigh. So a lot of this area is spared if you give a block at, say, for example, subgluteal area where the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh is spared, which is uh, a branch of sacral plexus and which is not a branch of the sciatic. So this area can get spared. So then you have to infiltrate a little or something like that. Uh, uh, tell the surgeon to infiltrate or something if there is an incision along this area and it is spared. Now, these are the standard protocols for all nerve blocks. First is the informed consent. Now, counsel the patient. This uh, sciatic nerve block is a very deep block, so it is quite uncomfortable for the patient. Even positioning the patient is a little uncomfortable because the patient has hip fractures. So, uh, counsel the patient properly. Then, no block should be given without having 20% intralipid in the OT. Because I've had a lot of experiences where uh, there was a two-year expiry date was over and they had thrown out the bottle and intralipid was not available and then local anesthesia systemic toxicity, I didn't have intralipid. So without this, never, and at least two bottles have to be there. The dose as you know is 0.5 ml per kg per minute, but that, okay, that I will not talk much about it. Then proper aseptic precautions have to be taken for any no block. Then the position of the patient is important. These blocks can be given in supine position, lateral position, even in prone position. Then landmarks, as I told you, have to be properly well felt because a lot of patients are obese patients where these landmarks are not very well uh, felt. Then because the gluteal, subgluteal areas uh, are deeper blocks, longer needles are required, you have to sedate the patient and give a local anesthetic quite deep. In brachial plexus block, we have to give a very superficial local uh, anesthesia because otherwise the nerves get blocked. Whereas here, you have to go quite deep because the needle goes through the whole gluteal muscle and the fat, and uh, that is why the deep uh, local anesthesia has to be given. Now, current strength for all lower limbs, I usually use 1.5 milliampere, And for upper limb blocks, I use only 1 milliampere. If you use higher current, then it's quite uncomfortable for the patient. Sometimes it's painful. And uh, for thicker nerves, which are deeper nerves, just one milliampere will take a lot of time to locate the nerve. So you have to keep at least 1.5 milliampere of the current. Needle length, you have to make sure that longer needles are available because uh, smaller uh, blocks we use 50 millimeters. Here, at least uh, 100 millimeters has to be available. Sometimes if the patient is very obese, even 150 millimeter uh, needle, long needle is required. Then end motor response, as I told you, that frankly i have had many instances where i have given the uh, block at when i got the hamstring twitches but now i have stopped i wait till i get the plantar flexion and inversion now uh, you have to plan the approach for the no blocks according to the surgery plan then whether they are going to use the tourniquet or not because if you use a popliteal uh, give a popliteal uh, block the tourniquet is the area is definitely spared then whether you are going to put a catheter, if you are giving a continuous block, then even the angle of the needle has to be different. It cannot be perpendicular to the skin. It has to be a little angulated so that the catheter can pass along the length of the needle. So when the blocks are higher blocks, gluteal, subgluteal area, you have to uh, angulate the needle uh, cordially. If you're giving a popliteal block, it has to be slightly cranially so that the catheter can go above, upwards. Then landmarks have to be easily identified, as I told you, and should cause minimum discomfort to the patient. Now, there are multiple approaches of uh, sciatic nerve block, the sacral plexus, the transgluteal, subgluteal, the anterior approach, and the popliteal uh, approach. Plus, beyond this, obviously, I will not go beyond this. There are rescue blocks, or you can give uh, blocks, uh, so ideally, uh, TBL, if you're giving uh, only popliteal and you're uh, operating below the knee, and some areas where the incision is on the medial side, which is supplied to the saphenous nerve, you can just infiltrate on the tibial uh, tuberosity just to block the cutaneous supply of the saphenous, which is a branch of the femoral. And the rest of the surgery can be done only under a popliteal nerve block. So now uh, let us start with the sacral plexus block. It is called as a Mansur approach. She first described it in 1993. Now, as you can see, the it 
the uh, sciatic nerve comes out from the greater sciatic foramen behind the piriformis muscle and this is the area where even the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh comes out from here so if you want to do any hip surgery then this block is a must even if you give a block at a lower level then usually hip surgery cannot be performed properly so for this and higher the block better the uh, action because i i'll go i'll talk about it later on so here are the basically landmarks are uh, the advantage is posterior thigh is also anesthetized sometimes the obturator nerve is also blocked because obturator nerve is also very close to the sacral plexus so patients will get uh, paresthesia in the perineal region or they can get even uh, urinary retention now uh, the landmarks are basically from the posterior superior iliac spine draw a straight line up to the ischial tuberosity so from here up to here and initially monsor described it at that 6 cm from this from this top you can inject infiltrate here and then go perpendicular to the skin after obviously proper aseptic precautions preparation all go perpendicular to the skin and then check for the end motor response which i usually accept the plantar flexion and inversion i'll tell you 10 times okay then uh, there are some people like dr sandeep diwan also had described i think in last conference that this same line you divide into three parts in the junction of the upper one third and the lower two third so at that point you go perpendicular to the skin and uh, infiltrate a little local go perpendicular to the skin with a, a longer needle and check for the end motor response and uh, inject about i usually inject about 15 to 20 ml now here if suppose you uh, the whole needle goes in 10 cm and needle you have to be very careful if you hit a bone on either side ideal you have to go little medial or little lateral but not if once you hit a bone no, don't go on um, centimeters inside just keep a tab how much uh, at what level you are hitting the bone because if you go too much inside then inside you can damage even the iliac vessels or even the ureter or sigmoid colon all these organs are very close to uh, so you don't go too deep in this block so all hip surgeries i usually give in the same position i give a lumbar plexus block at this level and then sacral plexus block at this level and all hip surgeries can be done only under these two blocks now labart in uh, 1923 he described this uh, labart's approach which is the standard uh, original uh, approach uh, where greater trochanter line uh, draw a line you have to keep a uh, tape ready and a marker ready in all these lower limb nerve blocks sterile markers are most important and tapes and from the greater trochanter draw a line up to the posterior superior iliac spine then from the midpoint draw up a perpendicular and at 5 cm infiltrate the skin and go perpendicular and check for the end motor response now this is a quite a deeper block and vini he added one more line from the greater trochanter to the sacral hiatus so there is one more extra landmark so that this is much more accurate than labart that is what i have found so there is one more extra landmark now most important here is to mark this greater trochanter you have to feel the greater trochanter from the inner aspect of the greater trochanter walk over the greater trochanter and when you stop feeling the bone at the medial end of that to uh, mark that point even here once you feel the iliac crest go behind as soon as you feel the uh, stop feeling the bone at that point to mark so that this line is much shorter the shorter this line the more accurate your landmarks are okay now uh, this is to mark the innermost aspects now if you uh, see this before giving this uh, block the position is most important this is called as a modified sims position sims position is normally when you do a per extension this is modified sims where the pelvis is tilted little forward so that the muscles become little tight and the fat doesn't fall much so this is a modified sims position where the lower limb is straight and the upper limb which is to be operated has to be flexed and the pelvis has to be tilted forward okay so this is the uh, now uh for these again is it is a deeper block so there is a i'll just show you this video is a deeper block so give proper local anesthesia and once you uh, 
ideally you have to press the gluteal area inside so that the nerve becomes a little more superficial and then once you hold your left hand the, the non uh, operated hand then don't move the hand otherwise the anatomy immediately changes so this is what uh, i'm giving a uh, venis block where i'm using a, a deeper uh, longer needle and the nerve to move it if you are getting then that means you are very superficial this is just a trouble shooting you are too superficial then you have to go a little deep till you get the plantar flexion in inversion then needle if the if it contacts the bone your ideal uh, uh, more lateral or more medial then uh, if you get sciatic twitches and then you hit the bone that means you have gone beyond that so again withdraw and relocate the nerve if you are getting hamstring twitches proper hamstring twitches then if you want you can accept but i will not the needle uh, place deep but no twitches elicited and no bone contact that means you can uh, you are probably in going through the greater sciatic foramen you have to be very careful you can uh, injure the organ inside then if as you are the genital organs if you are more medial now this is raj approach where uh, this is ideal in uh, very small babies and we usually give this in uh, small uh, ch uh, children and very obese patients if you can see this very obese patient is very difficult to feel the landmarks so if you make the patient supine which is more comfortable even for the patient and you flex the hip in 90 degrees and flex the knee at 90 degrees you have to have some assistant who is quite hefty to uh, lift up this obese patient and then this whole muscle gluteal muscles become tight and you can easily feel the landmarks so the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity and midpoint of that you go perpendicular to the skin after infiltrating local anus and you go perpendicular to the skin and you can see the plantar flexion and inversion in just in right in front of you so ideally i sit on a stool while giving a block and raise the uh, table mark and then somebody holds the uh, hip as well as the knee flexion and then i give a block now uh, d benedetto uh, he described a subgluteal approach now here this is much less painful to the patient because you are traversing through much less tissue so what in the seems position only same thing same like uh, uh, the previous raj approach the same landmark greater trochanter line drawing between the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity from the midpoint draw a perpendicular 4 cm downwards distally and again go perpendicular to the skin after infiltration and check for the pain motor response so this is deep benedetto's approach a uh, lot of people are uh, doing this because it is much less painful then there is one carlo franco from rush medical college he described one uh, approach where you need not feel any landmarks and this is especially uh, good in obese patients i have done this and it works uh, sometimes now of course with a ultrasound which is available then you can easily give these blocks but then when ultrasound is not available when the patient is very obese you can't feel any landmarks what you have to do is from the intergluteal crease from the midpoint of that intergluteal crease draw a line uh, hold the uh, ruler here and 10 cm laterally at this point 
you go perpendicular to the skin and check for the inverted response. So there is no need to feel any bony landmark, and no need to uh, stretch the soft tissue there. Now, as you go lower down, the popliteal, uh, the uh, sciatic nerve splits into two, as I told you, the common peroneal and the uh, tibial nerve. This block, I usually give at around 10 centimeters from the popliteal crease because you never know where the nerve is going to split. So this is, there's a uh, diamond shaped area where this is medial is uh, semi-membranous, semi-tendinous tendon. This is a biceps femoris tendon, and these are the gastrocnemius. So from this, at the apex of this triangle, if you draw a line along the popliteal crease, apex of the triangle, you go perpendicular to the skin, infiltrate and you go perpendicular. And uh, if you can feel the popliteal artery with your left hand, just go lateral to it because the nerve is lateral to the popliteal artery. Now this block can be given either in prone position or in the same position as where you uh, give a Raj uh, technique with a supine position with a hip flex at 90 degrees, knee flex at 90 degrees and this area. Or you can give in lateral position also. So this is a uh, little lower down. If you're using a tourniquet, as I told you, you cannot give this block. But all uh, surgeries below the knee, this is an ideal block to give if you're not using a tourniquet. Even all ankle surgeries or diabetic foot and all, this block is ideal block. Even for a continuous block, this is also a good location if you want to give a continuous block. See, if you want to put a catheter for uh, that monsoon technique or even gluteal area, continuous blocks are a little more difficult to, you know, locate the catheter and pass the catheter. Plus, when the patient is sleeping on uh, the, in that area, it can move. Whereas this area is much safer to give a continuous block. Now, here also, when I give the block, I usually don't accept the calf muscle switches because... There are a lot of uh, patients where the, the nerve supply, muscular supply is given outside the nerve sheath. So even if you're getting calf muscle twitches, you might be outside the sheath and the block may act partially. Now this is uh, Beck's approach, this is the anterior approach. Actually, I will not go into details because I'm supposed to talk only on the posterior approach. But this approach is ideal when you just cannot change the position of the patient. The patient cannot turn on any side. This is the anterior approach, but this is a very deep block. This is just beyond the lesser trochanter. You will draw a line for parallel to the uh, inguinal ligament and the junction of medial one third and lateral two thirds, where this and draw a line parallel to that from the greater trochanter and where this line intersects this line. Just go perpendicular to the skin and then you hit the lesser trochanter, walk over the lesser trochanter, and then you check the end motor response. But there are, there are a lot of major vessels here. So, and this is very, very deep block. I've given it only once. And because I just couldn't turn the patient at all. But I had given it only once. After that, I have not given more. Then lateral approach, again, between the vastus lateral and the biceps femoris, the groove here, go 10 centimeters above the popliteal crease, go perpendicular to the skin. When you hit the femur, just withdraw the needle slightly, note the distance, withdraw the needle slightly and go 30 degrees downwards, but not more than uh, one inch because you can hit the popliteal artery beyond that. So don't go too deep, just 30 degrees downwards and check for the end motor response. Now, what are the complications of sciatic nerve blocks? So infection is, uh, for all the nerve blocks, hematoma. When a patient is on a blood thinner, and where you can't give epidural, when you can't give spinal, and you have to give a nerve block, then don't give deeper sciatic nerve blocks. Superficial blocks you can give because the hematomas, we cannot even uh, diagnose whether the patient has got a hematoma inside. And then patient get, it can get infected. So if the patient is on anticoagulants, don't give deeper nerve blocks. Vascular punctures, like any other uh, the same local anesthesia toxicity, again, uh, if you are injecting intravascular. Now, nerve injury. Now, sciatic nerve has a unique predisposition for mechanical and pressure injury. So, this, this is uh, quite common. So, you have to be very careful when you're tying a tourniquet, when you're giving a block, tying a tourniquet, and especially post-operative, you have to inform the sister, the patient, and the relative that you should, they should not sit because the area is numb for quite some time. They should not sit on a chair on the sciatic nerve because... Uh, it can uh, uh, affect the nerve supply to the sciatic. Uh, 
okay then i never uh, use adrenaline when i'm injecting uh, sorry i usually use opioacane for a sciatic nerve block or combination of sensorcane and xylocaine without adrenaline for a sciatic nerve block any other nerve blocks i can use with adrenaline but not this and tourniquet also again causes ischemia of the sciatic nerve now there are uh, multiple papers uh, describing uh, you know there are so many approaches there are multiple papers which are comparing one approach to the other and uh, for children it is considered as a posterior and lateral approach is the most suitable for children then uh, popliteal nerve blocks cause less discomfort during performance of the sciatic nerve block because they and they recommend the use of posterior approach of the sciatic nerve block because they are less comfortable there are multiple papers on this now here uh, there is one paper where they have seen the differences between the uh, action of the sciatic nerve blocks from proximal to the distal portion the uh, uh, time taken for the action the time taken for giving the block then the uh, proper action which is taken so what they have found out that in the sciatic nerve block the ratio of the neuronal to non neuronal tissue actually it's in all the nerves the neuronal to non neuronal tissue changes significantly the uh, point from where the nerve starts the neuronal tissues are much more and the connective tissues are less so as the nerve goes down the connective tissues go on increasing and the neuronal tissues are less so the block action is much less but chances of nerve damage are also much less now there is one uh, sciatic nerve block where posterior approach is more efficient than lateral approach so there are multiple papers on that now so the, uh, what i am trying to tell you is to summarize the approach definitely matters so you have to plan uh, you have to find out discuss with the surgeon what surgery is going to do what is the incision is going to be whether he is going to require a tourniquet to the patient as i told you small children and all rash technique is the best then landmarks whether they are seen and palpable then positioning for the block is most important then patient cooperation then whether you are going to give only for anesthesia or analgesia whether you are going to put a continuous catheter there so popliteal area and subluteal area also you can put a continuous catheter then whether you are going to give a single shot or continuous then patient whether is on anticoagulant then whether you uh, give with usg guidance deeper blocks now usg is definitely a uh, treat thank you so i can you can you imagine how much the sciatic nerve will be in this patients thank you thank you very much shalesh sir it was indeed very informative excellent and enlightening presentation your videos were very amazing and lively you kept no stone unturned and you described all blocks uh, all approaches of block very well and thank met you. all the ideas very clear thank you very much sir now our next speaker is dr ganesh bhom he will be talking on ultrasound guided sciatic nerve block dr ganesh bhom is working in sancheti hospital since more than 10 years he is very sincere and hard working and his main interest are regional and pediatric anesthesia now i invite dr ganesh bhong and request to take over over to you ganesh sir thank you and here you sir sciatic nerve block by posterior approach Let's go quickly through functional anatomy of sciatic nerve. It is the largest nerve in the body. It is formed from the L4-5 and S1-2-3 roots. These roots join to form sacral plexus on the anterior surface of lateral sacrum. These roots converge to form sciatic nerve on the anterior surface of piriformis muscle. Nerve exit pelvis by passing below piriformis muscle. then now descends between ischial tuberosity and trochanter femur now runs over superficial to inter obturator internus glomeruli and quadratus femoris muscle during this course nerve is accompanied on its medial side by posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh 
and inferior gluteal artery. Below this level, the course of the nerve can be marked by a straight line joining midpoint of GT and IT to the apex of popliteal fossa. During this course, nerve lies beneath bicep femoris muscle. Distribution of blockade. Sciatic nerve block results in anesthesia of skin of posterior aspect of thigh, hamstrings muscles, part of hip and knee joint, and entire leg below knee, with exception of skin of the medial aspect of lower leg and foot, which is supplied by saphenous nerve. Coming to indications, it is indicated in surgeries on the knee, calf, Achilles tendon, ankle, and foot. It is also used in post op analysis for TKR. When combined with femoral or lumbar plexus block, anesthesia of entire lower extremity can be achieved. Now, why ultrasounds? These are the some tricky situations where ultrasound becomes a necessity, like badly crushed foot, where we cannot assess the twitches of the foot. Then amputated leg, where there are no endpoints to neurostimulation. Again, leg in plaster, where we cannot appreciate movements of foot and ankle. And post-op patient of tear repair, where neurostimulation is not advised. Advantages of ultrasound are, there is early onset of action. We can go down with the volume. There is decreased incidence of vascular puncture. And there is decreased incidence of nerve injury. Zion, Kao and colleagues did a meta-analysis on ultrasound-guided technology versus neurostimulation for sciatic nerve block. And they found that use of ultrasound improves the success rate of block and reduce the risk of vascular puncture. Giorgio Danelli and colleagues did a study on the effects of ultrasound guidance and neurostimulation on minimum effective anesthetic volume of mepivacin required to block sciatic nerve. And they found that effective dose in 95% cases was 14 ml with ultrasound and 29 ml with neurostimulation group. And they concluded that ultrasound guidance provided a 37% reduction in minimum effective anesthetic volume of mupivacin required to block sciatic nerve as compared to neurostimulation. Contraindications are local infection and bed sores at the site of insertion, coagulopathy, pre-existing central or peripheral nervous system disorders, allergy to local anesthetics, and pre-existing neurological deficit in distribution of the nerve, nerve block. In today's lecture, we are going to describe uh, two approaches. First is transgluteal level, which is at the level of greater trochanter and ischial debrosity. And second, infragluteal level at the level of uh, bicep femoris muscle. So coming to transgluteal approach, this approach is often called as subgluteal approach also. The sciatic nerve is readily identified in predictable anatomic arrangement between ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter and beneath a well-defined muscle plane. So you should remember greater trochanter, ischial tuberosity, gluteus maximus, and quadratus femoris muscle. Coming to position of this approach, patient is in lateral decubitus position, tilted slightly forwards with dependent leg extended and leg to be blocked flexed in the knee. This is the probe position in transluteal approach. Probe used is a low frequency curvilinear probe, which is placed in the transverse plane between greater trochanter and ischial debrosity. This is the photograph showing ergonomics where operator, patient, and ultrasound machine are in the same line. This is the sono anatomy of transluteal approach. Nerve can be visualized between two hyperechoic bony prominences, that is greater trochanter and ischial debrosity. This is lateral side, this is medial side. Luteus maximus is the most superficial layer. Sciatic nerve can be seen just deep to gluteus maximus muscle and superficial to quadratus femoris muscle. It is seen as a hyperechoic triangular structure. It is often seen closer to ischial debrosity than retrotrochanter. Manoj, Karmakar and colleagues did a case report of five cases where they described a subgluteal space. This is a hypoechoic space 
present between hyperechoic perimysium of the uterus maximus muscle and hyperechoic perimysium of chondritus femoris muscle. This space extends laterally from greater trochanter to medially uh, uh, up till ischial debrosity. Sciatic nerve can be seen as a hyperechoic nodule in this hypoechoic subglutal space. Deposition of local anesthetic solution in this subglutal space resulted in successful sciatic nerve block. This is the video showing transglutal approach. This is uh, greater trochanter, ischial fibrosity, needle coming from lateral side. This is gluteus maximus muscle. Nerve is seen as a triangular hyperechoic structure just below gluteus maximus. Drug is being given around the nerve. You can appreciate circumferential drug spread around the nerve. This is video showing combined ultrasound plus PNS guided sciatic nerve block. Probe is placed between GT and IT in transverse plane using PNS. Current is set at 1 milliampere. Reducing the current, response we are getting is dorsiflexion and eversion. Decreasing current to 0.6. Now we can give drug here. Now coming to infragluteal approach. It is given just below the level of luteal crease, where imaging is not interfered by the bones. Sciatic nerve is placed deep to long head of bicep muscles and superficial to adductor magnus muscle. This is patient is in lateral position. This is greater trochanter laterally and ischial debrosity medially. This horizontal line represents gluteal crease. The probe is placed just below gluteal crease. And needle approach is in plane approach just above the probe. This is anatomy of infragluteal approach. Sciatic nerve can be seen as a hyperechoic spindle shaped structure just below bicep femoris muscle and superficial to adductor magnus muscle. This is femur. In lean patient, we can use linear probe also, where sciatic nerve can be seen as elliptical hyperechoic structure just below bicep femoris muscle. Coming to uh, scanning technique of infragluteal approach, one can start scanning from the level of transluteal level to the distal level, or one can start uh, scanning from popliteal fossa because scanning in popliteal fossa is easier. So once you identify the nerve, then scanning should be continued till desired level. One should choose the best view of the nerve at any distance from mid femur to infragluteal fold. Optimal view of nerve is more important for the success of block. Posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh is unreliably anesthetized with infragluteal block. This is the video showing scanning of infragluteal approach from proximal to distal. Probe is placed at transluteal level that is between GT and IT. And probe is being slided downwards while keeping eye on the nerve. This is greater trochanter, ischial debrosity, and this is hyperechoic sciatic nerve below gluteus maximus muscle at transluteal level. Now probe is being slided downwards while keeping eye on the nerve. At times nerve disappears. This is called as anisotropy of the nerve. You have to do adjustment by tilting the probe to see the nerve. Probe is slided downwards till you get optimal view of nerve. This is hyperechoic sciatic nerve. Alternatively, you can start scanning from the apex of popliteal fossa to proximal level because imaging in uh, popliteal fossa is easy. And the probe is slided proximally till you get optimal view of the nerve. The scanning at popliteal fossa. These are the popliteal vessels. This is popliteal sciatic nerve just below bicep femoris muscle. Now, Scanning the probe proximally, you can see hyperechoic sciatic nerve just below bicep femoris. Scanning is done till you get desired view of the nerve.
This is video showing intraluteal sciatic nerve block. This is sciatic nerve, hyperechoic nerve below bicep femoris muscle. This is needle entering from lateral side. Direction of the needle should be tangential and at the corner of the nerve to avoid the injury. Now drug is being given around the nerve. You can appreciate needle tip. When there is a drug being given around the nerve. There is nice drug spread around the nerve. At this level, you can turn the probe 90 degrees to have longitudinal view. Now turning the probe, yes, you can see sciatic nerve in longitudinal view and you can see presence of drug above and above and below the nerve. This is needle tip. And you can see extent of drug spread along the length of the nerve. It is easier to place the catheter in longitudinal view than in transverse view. Complications of sciatic nerve are nerve block are infection, hematoma, vascular puncture, local anesthetic toxicity, and nerve injury. To avoid nerve injury, one should do slow advancement of the needle towards the nerve. One should not inject the drug when there is pain or high pressure during injection. One should not inject the drug when there is stimulation below 0.3 mA. Patient and nursing staff should be advised to take care of the insensate extremity. Elevate the heel and rest it on soft cushion. There is a need for frequent body repositioning to avoid stretch, stretching and prolonged ischemia while sitting on anesthetized sciatic nerve. Coming to catheter technique, the goal of catheter technique is to place the catheter in the vicinity of the sciatic nerve between gluteus maximus and quadratus femoris. The needle is advanced in plane in lateral to medial direction while keeping nerve in transverse view. One should confirm the presence of catheter below the gluteus maximus fascia. Alternatively, catheter can be inserted using a longitudinal view that is in plane approach. Yoshida and colleagues described an ultrasound guided approach for proximal sciatic nerve block and published in RAPM in 2018. And they compared this approach with anterior approach. The advantage of this approach is that patient can be in supine position while giving this block and the curvilinear probe is placed just below most prominent part of uh, greater trochanter and then probe is slided posteriorly as far as possible. Then needle entry point is just above the probe. This is the schematic diagram of this approach where probe is kept at uh, greater trochanter. This is direction of needle in uh, direction of the needle just above the probe towards the sciatic nerve, which is sandwiched between uteus maximus, quadratus femoris, and original bicep femoris muscle. And uh, these they found that the ultrasound guided lateral approach for proximal sciatic nerve law can be performed as successfully as anterior approach, and posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh is often blocked in this approach than anterior approach. This is an interesting article by Anton Nader, published in RAPM in 2013, where they studied a dose ranging study of 0.5% bupivacin or ropivacin on success and duration of UAG plus PNS guided sciatic nerve block. So they performed the block in 142 patients and they divided these patients in 14 groups, seven of 0.5% ropivacin and seven of bupivacin. Again, these, they divided uh, uh, these patients in the sense of volumes ranging from 2.5 to 30 mm. And they studied success of block, onset of block, and duration of block. And they found that successful block was achieved in 30 out of 40 patients in volume less 5 mL or lesser than 5 mL, while 97 out of 99 received a, a, a successful block uh, having volume more than 10 mL. Then, 
uh, with the group having volume 2.5 to 5 ml were associated with delayed onset and decreased block duration while volumes greater than 10 ml did not extend the duration of the block so they concluded that injecting 10 10 ml of 0.5% bupivacaine or ropivacaine produces comparable onset and duration of block as volume as large as 30 ml this is the chart of their study which shows volumes of 10 and 15 ml have the duration of the block same as that of volumes 30 ml while volumes of 5 ml and 2.5 ml had lesser duration of block this is another interesting study by korohara published in rapm in 2012 where they studied incidence and effects of unintentional intraneural injection during ultrasound guided subluteal sciatic nerve block. They studied 325 patients undergoing arthroscopic knee surgery who received a subluteal sciatic nerve block by ultrasound guidance. Then they gave around 20 ml of the drug to produce circumferential drug spread around the nerve. An ultrasound video was recorded and used to examine whether local anesthetic was injected intraneural. The definition of intraneural injection was set as any apparent swelling uh, in the any part of the nerve while giving the injection and they found that intraneural injection was detected in 46 patients that is 16.3 percent of the patients then onset of sensor and motor blockade was faster in patients with intraneural injection then duration of sensory blockade was similar between patients with or without intraneural injection and no patient developed post-operative neurological complications. So this study shows that uh, even with the use of ultrasound, there is a possibility of intraneural injection. So one should be careful with needle advancement. You should not inject when there is a pressure uh, or resistance during injection or pain during injection. And you should use dual modality as far as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ganesh, for amazing and wonderful presentation. Your all videos were very outstanding and lively. You also kept no stone unturned of USG guidance of posterior sciatic nerve block, and you made all ideas very clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we move ahead our session for panel discussion. We are fortunate and blessed to have with us our expert team for panel discussion. Our panelists are Dr. Surjit Giri, Dr. Ashit Mehta, Dr. Bhartiya De, and Dr. Sandeep Divan. I first invite Dr. Surjit Giri for his expert opinion. Dr. Surjit Giri is from Sipsagar, Assam. He is working as consultant anesthesiologist, critical care and pain palliative care physician in Pragati Hospital. Sipsagar Assam. He is governing council member of ISA, executive committee member of AORA, and he has received many awards and done great work in regional anesthesia. I now invite Dr. Surjit Giri to uh, provide the session. Thank you. Thank you, Mamda Ma'am. Uh, it was an uh, excellent presentation by uh, Sailesh sir, and he has uh, included everything uh, in his presentation. Uh, but uh, he has not mentioned about the volumes, local anesthetic volume, as well as the assessment of the block. So how will you assess the sciatic nerve is uh, block has taken or not? So I'll just, uh, uh, that is the point I want to add. Another thing uh, I want to share a short experience of mine about uh, 10 centimeter lateral sciatic nerve block. So uh, can I share my screen? Hello? Yes, sir, you can share. I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see? Yes, sir. We can see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a, a short review that is around uh, for uh, uh, 559 patient. Uh, that is uh, 10 centimeter lateral approach that is already uh, explained by uh, our speaker, Sailesh sir, and uh, this is my only personal view. So we have indi the indication for these blocks were for the femur surgery, the supracondylar femur, the tibial surgery, ankle surgery, and Achilles tendon repair. 
Now we have included that is the weight of around 60 kg or more than that because you already know that for a lower limb surgery you need to give two blocks that is sciatics or in case uh, suppose you are for the hip surgery then you have to go for the lumbar plexus etc so we have included only the 60 kg not less than 60 kg uh, patient and maximum up to 155 kg and volume in all patient was around 25 ml not more than that we use 0.5 percent levobupivacaine and we used 10 centimeters and 15 centimeter stimuflex needle and there is a saying that the pelvis that is a male pelvis is different the female pelvis is different though the, the sciatic nerves will be uh, in, in the different location etc etc but in our uh, this review you see the male and the female percentage is almost same and uh, this is a sketch diagram this uh, suppose this is the fracture end that it should be up on the lateral position and here in our in our technique the landmark is only one that is the intergluteal sulcus now this intergluteal sulcus is very prominent from the distance itself you can say oh this is the intergluteal sulcus and if he is a human being he have the intergluteal sulcus this especially true if the patient is around 140 kg or 150 kg and the weight is increasing because of the luxurious habits of our patient now it is it may be very difficult to identify and locate the greater rotator the scale diversity etc but here in this franco approach that already explained our speaker this intergluteal sulcus is the only landmark and studies have shown suppose the piriformis muscles lies here and when the the sighting nerve emerges from the piriformis muscle so it runs parallel to the intrasclenic uh, this uh, sorry inter, um, intergluteal sulcus so it's if you go from here that is from uh, this is the intergluteal sulcus suppose the many adults uh, we have found that it, it is around 14 centimeters so you take the midpoint of this intergluteal sulcus go exactly exactly 10 centimeter lateral from the airport and same thing applies to the infragluteal approach that is in at the level of the gluteal fold we go 10 centimeter lateral to the inter, uh, intergluteal sulcus so this is our landmark so but the must thing is that the buttock that is resting about of uh, this bed is should be perpendicular to the bed and needle should be perpendicular to the skin so this is our patient that is 559 patient uh, gluteal approach around 68 percent and infragluteal approach around one uh, 32 percent and this is our technique you see this is the needle i am getting at around one two three seven centimeter i am getting the sciatic nerve and the landmark is only the intergluteal sulcus this is the intergluteal sulcus and in this patient the intergluteal sulcus length was around 14 centimeters so we took the midpoint of the intergluteal sulcus that is around seven centimeters and we went exactly 10 centimeter lateral from this point this is the needle entry point and you see the needle is entered perpendicular to the skin and this buttock this buttock should be perpendicular to the bed and our end motor response should be always plantar flexion i, I uh, fully agree with Sole, sir that we are looking for the plantar flexion or finger flexions that should be the end motor response so here i am getting all plantar flexion even the uh, finger flexion and our threshold point is 0.3 not less than that and in our sighting nerve block, it is a very thick nerve. So you go for around 0.3. If I am getting the twitches at 0.3, that will be the end motor response. And then we inject the local anesthetics. So this is the threshold point, 0.32 in all patients. So what is the success rate definition? Patients should not able to do the push at the ankle joint. There should not be any temperature sensation at the dorsum and the plantar area, and there should not be any supplementation of anesthetic. That is called a success rate. Now, you see, in our cases, we have got success rate around 93.02% in gluteal approach 93 and infragluteal approach that is around 92.69.
time for completion of the procedure is slightly more in case of infragnotary area. Manipulation of the needle is slightly more required in case of infragnotary approach. Onset of block. After giving the block, we assess the block dynamics at around 25 minutes and we keep on assessing up to 45 minutes. Even after 45 minutes, there is no block, then it is termed as a failure of the block. Postoperatively, the patient comfortability was reviewed and we found that almost get, get out of 90%, around 95% people said it was a very comfortable block. I did not find any discomfort and mind it, we are not sedating this group of patients. We just infiltrate that area, that is injecting area, and we keep the patient awake in our all procedures. The advantages of this technique is that I have already told that every human being has a prominent and a well-defined intergluteal sulcus. From the distance, you can say, this is the intergluteal sulcus, so I'll go, this is the midpoint, I'll go at 10 centimeter lateral to this technique. It is a very easy to identify. Is a very reliable and as there is no such of uh, vital structure is there, so minimal to no complication. I have not found till now by the grace of the God, no complication at all. Once what one patient complained uh, some parasthesia to the uh, this common perineal component and later it was found it was uh, the tight casting which was applied in the fibular head was the cause. Now patient acceptance is high. Already our two speaker already ex ex expressed that if you go to the good rail approach, it will cover the posterior fitness nerve that is uh, is uh, uh, blocked with uh, uh, simultaneously. And that is why uh, you not uh, if the surgeon is using the tourniquet, the patient will not get any discomfort. The biggest disadvantage is as the people are weight as increasing day by day. Now the adipose tissue the is highly concentrated in the buttock. Now, if the weight increases, suppose around 130 kg or 120 kg, the adipose tissue more increases in the gluteal area. So if you use 10 centimeter needle, that may not be sufficient to locate the sciatic nerve. You're not going to reach the sciatic nerve. So you have to use the 15 centimeter in those patients. Otherwise, I have not found any disadvantage at all. So this is one of the uh, simplest technique. And even a novice who has just started his practice, uh, he can... Uh, practice this uh, technique uh, for sciatic nerve. Thank you very much. And what uh, I want to add uh, that is Felicer has not included, that is the assessment of the lower limb blocks. When it, after giving the block, then it is called the four piece. That is push and pull for the obturator nerve, push for the tibial nerve, and pins about the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This, is, this, this assess the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and ask the patient to punt, means kick in the air, if the, kick the football in the air like this. So if they cannot do, means if he cannot do this, means tibial nerve is blocked properly. If he cannot do this, means uh, pull inside, means obturator nerve is proper, uh, blocked properly. And if your uh, patient is not getting any pin sensation about lateral part of the thigh, means lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is blocked. And if he cannot do punt, means kick in the air, means the femoral is also blocked. So everything is blocked. The patient is now ready for the surgery anesthesia. Now, uh, uh, even then, before going for the incision or the surgery, we take an ice cube and run over the incision area. And if the patient is not getting that uh, cold sensation, then we go for the surgery. So that is what I want to add only. Thank you. Over to Ganesh. Thank you very much, Giri sir, for your expert opinion and informative presentation and lively discussion. Your all videos were very amazing. Thanks a lot for joining us today, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Now I invite our next panelist, Dr. Ashit Mehta. Dr. Ashit Mehta is from Sholapur. He is founder member and vice president of AORA. He has conducted many ultrasound guided and PNS guided workshops. His field of interest is pain management. I invite Dr. Mehta for the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, good evening. I think uh, both the speakers uh, uh, I have almost covered every part of uh, the block. So I just uh, want to ask uh, how much is the quantity of the drug which is usually, I mean, is sufficient to give this uh, block? I usually uh, accept more than 25 ml of the drug. What is your opinion, Sandeep, sir? 
I think uh, uh, Shailesh and uh, uh, Surjit and Ganesh should answer this first. Okay. Then uh, we'll make it uh, this thing. I usually inject about 20 ml. Hmm. Here. So I give more uh, in a lumbar plexus block than just the sciatic block if I give, give it at a higher level. About 20 ml, not more than 20. Yeah, Surjit, what about your experience? Uh, we are injecting the max to max 25 ml, not more than that. 25. Two five. Okay. Yes. And Ashit. Uh, Ashit, what about you? Yeah, I usually use about twenty-five to thirty ml. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the more the less, uh, lesser the volume. Uh, I have experienced the failure rate. Ganesh, you were saying trying to say something. Yes, yes. We with the uh, use of ultrasound, we can see actually drug spread around the nerve. So we can go down with the volumes. Uh, we usually use around 15 to 20 ml of the drug. So I think uh, not much has changed. Uh, even with ultrasound, you're giving the same volume of drug what uh, we have been giving by PNS. Uh, isn't it, Ashit? What is your uh, opinion about this? Yes, almost uh, whether we give it with ultrasound or PNS, the quantity of the drug required for blocking the sciatic nerve uh, remains the same. That's what uh, my experience is. Yeah, that that is the that is the always the fear behind that uh, it might lead to a failure of block. So even if you uh, keep on doing with ultrasound, you are still not satisfied with the drug still going all around the nerve, and you keep on injecting more and more. And that is the reason why, uh, though there are clinical studies, as Ganesh has mentioned in one, that uh, how much you said, it's almost thirty percent reduction. That's what you said, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, they have done a couple of these patients and with an increasing and decreasing trend of volumes, that's a good study uh, just to understand that the least volume required may be 10 ml and not, should not go beyond this, below this. But I think most of us, even with ultrasound, have been using around 20 ml for a clinical, uh, for a clinical block. I think for upper limb blocks, the volume has definitely changed. Means uh, because they are superficial blocks, we have definitely reduced the volume with ultrasound. But mm -hmm. for low limb blocks, I don't think there's much of a difference. You because they are deeper blocks, and if the response is not as good, then you keep on injecting a little more. Surjit, I was a bit. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean the, the uh, presentation was really good um, uh, regarding uh, your uh, study. Uh, the inclusion criteria, what you said was, uh, uh, you said something like. Uh, uh, weight more than 155 kgs. A very wide variation of uh, weight. No, no, sir. The, the, the criteria is that we take at least the 60 kg minimum and then we went to up to uh, four patients. I got around 145 to 150 kg. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, this is not a comparative study. It is just a, a study uh, because... Uh, just, we... just, sir, sir, review on this. To, just uh, to show the here only that is in the Prague group. Okay, but are you going to uh, publish this? If you want to publish this, then you need to have some separate uh, inclusion criteria, exclusions, and then the, uh, yeah, the the Excel sheet data, which has to be analyzed. All those things uh, does matter. Yeah, yeah, sir. And you also need to define the success uh, of the block. Now, exactly. success, uh, success of the block has to be very stringent, actually, and uh, particularly. Uh, when you mentioned that you just, uh, may, uh, I mean, uh, monitored the sensory analysis here, um, it does not, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it does not fulfill the criteria. You need to mention whether they have pain during surgical incision, what amount of sedation in the form of uh, uh, medications were given. All these things does matter. Sir, 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 I have included that criteria also. So who, the patient who got the anesthetics, uh, this uh, supplemental anesthetic that was regarded as a failure. Uh -huh. Uh, in the, one of your this thing, the last slide you mentioned about lateral femoral cutaneous block, but uh, uh, it, uh, it doesn't uh, really come in the sciatic, isn't it? No, no, no. It is sir, only to show that there is lower limb block assessment, not for the sciatic. Ah, that's lower limb. Yeah. Uh, a good presentation by both uh, Shailesh and Ganesh. Thank you very much Thank for you, all those things. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ganesh, you mentioned about the subgluteal space. Yes, sir. And this is just in five cases. Yes. Uh, did you find any other article we're mentioning about the subgluteal space since it was presented in 2013? After that, uh, 
yes uh, mm-hmm. in 2013 uh, i don't remember author uh, he did the study uh, no, he is manush karmakar who did the study yes, but yes, after no. that till today in all these seven years did you see anybody mention about the subluteal space or have you ever seen the subluteal space because you injected the drug uh, this was uh, your slide uh, showing in 2015 and uh, this was uh, after that the subluteal space and uh, the subluteal space was never seen in this case okay so uh, do you find any studies apart from those five cases which have been mentioned what is the incidence of this space or uh, uh, or any other study which uh, have you come across mm. no any, any, actually any... there was study in 2013 but uh... i don't remember the name and that no the same uh, 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 dr manoj karmakar he has mentioned this subluteal space okay. so after that there is no mention about this space anywhere or there is no incidence at least i have not come across if anybody has come across do text me because i need to write, write it in my uh, one of my books shailesh uh, considering the subluteal space now uh, ganesh says, says that this space is very important to identify and you have to place your needle tip in that particular area now with penis we never have this uh, i mean we, we can never see this or we can never do this. so what is your opinion about this no i have no idea what is subluteal space even i have not i give with the ultrasound also but i have never seen this subluteal space specifically mm-hmm. and uh, in fact uh, i wanted to ask you a different uh, thing uh, those who are giving with a nerve stimulator do you give separate blocks to tibial and common yeah. corneum correct that's what also i wanted to ask Uh, uh ganesh uh, you mentioned about the needle going in the corner pocket uh, doing the sciatic nerve block yes and with the neuro stimulation so how many percent over times did you identify the uh, nerve and what nerve was identified you go from lateral to medial isn't it yes sir and you deposit the uh, needle tip uh, close to the lateral part of the sciatic nerve yes so uh, it should be a common peroneal nerve Yes, in my opinion. Yes, sir. So and then you inject a local anesthetic, and I never saw the needle going across uh, around on the other side and trying to inject uh, in that area. Yes. Yeah. So that's what Silas wanted to ask you. What exactly is the uh, uh, what stimulation to accept? Because Silas mentioned about plantar flexion. Sujit mentioned about plantar flexion as the end point. yes uh, with neuro stimulation actually uh, we need to get uh, plantar flexion response that is mm-hmm. uh, tibial but with uh, use of ultrasound we can be sure ki drug is spreading all around the nerve and there is no need to go uh, again on medial side uh, to give the drug uh, drug can uh, you we can you can uh, observe on the ultrasound that is drug is uh, spreading around the nerve so it will block both the components So but your end point is just the volume spread of the drug. Yes, we are we are using uh, PNS to just uh, as a safety measure uh, to avoid intraneural injection or uh, if there is current below 0.3, then uh, we adjust our needle just just for that additional safety. Yeah, but you mentioned about 16.3 patients having intraneural injections, and um, yes. many times uh, the sciatic nerve block is a intraneural. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, with uh, only PNS, one uh, Xavier Sala Blanche uh, did a study where. uh he uh, he did study on uh, pns guided sciatic block and uh, he identified the nerve with pns and uh, uh, while giving drug he put the ultrasound and recorded the video then he found that uh, with, uh, with, with with pns uh, there is around uh, the chances of intranural injections are 73% so with ultrasound uh, actually we are uh, coming down that 16.3 is all, uh, better than 73% so Uh, with ultrasound and pns we definitely uh, uh, safety may, uh, there is safeguard always so uh, you mean to say that uh, if uh, zaver mentioned 70.3 uh, all pns guided must be intraneural then and then uh, if, if and if he has not come across any neurological definite deficits it means that even less than 0.3 is safe uh, no sir uh, because we don't do electrophysiological <laughs> uh so uh, one uh, study was capillary uh, 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 so he he did an intraneural uh, intentional in, intraneural injection and did a electrophysiological study and he found that with intraneural injections uh, the electrophysiological changes were seen at uh, persistent changes are seen at 5 uh, weeks but uh, at 6 month there were no changes and patient were not complaining of any weakness so there is a uh, still uh, persistent electrophysiological changes that we don't see usually 
so with intraneural injection there is always uh, some uh, in, uh, insult to the nerve well, i think it is not intraneural it must be inside the paraneural sheath which is a common sheath covering the site uh, the tibial as well as the common peroneal component no we are talking about subgluteal uh, mm-hmm. proximal level proximal level not uh, popliteal level no no he is he is speaking about the uh, the uh, paraneural tissue is present everywhere everywhere no yeah it's not necessary that it should be in the popliteal fossa itself yeah, exactly. and uh, the reason may be reason may be sir uh, because uh, uh, the kamen uh, lasako uh, who commented on this cap- uh, study of capillary that uh, the connective uh, the there is abundant connective tissue in uh, sciatic nerve not on proximal level but at intragluteal or popliteal sciatic level so that may be safeguard against uh, the injury again uh, he mentioned that peripheral nerves are uh, have remarkable uh, potential to heal and again minor injuries get unnoticed by the patient and practitioner also so these may be the reasons that we do not find uh, that uh, there, there is persistent uh, uh, in uh, persistent motor or sensory weakness okay so um, uh, shailesh wanted to say something you know what i said is it must be inside the paraneural sheath not in the perineurium of the because each nerve is covered yeah. in the perineurium so it's endoneurium epineurium and perineurium yeah. not in the perineurium it must be outside the perineurium also so somebody be- you want to say something yeah, yeah. Uh, actually there were some studies where uh, there were multiple layers of uh, covering on the sciatic nerve Mm-hmm. So it can be in, in between any of the nerves. Yeah. So, and, uh, one more thing, in 2016, in a, a muscle, ligament, and tendon journal, there is a mention of the deep uh, gluteal space problems and piriformis syndrome. Yeah. So if you can, that is by uh, Louis Caro. Yeah. Uh, for your, uh, the, if you're writing a book on that, then this is one of the. Uh, article which show which says about uh, this deep uh, subgluteal space yeah so um, i think uh, all, all of us should read about uh, one particular article and uh, that is the uh, quantitative uh, can we mute ourselves please uh, that is about the uh, quantitative architecture of uh, sciatic nerve ganesh are you hearing this yes sir yes sir yeah so uh, i think uh, you should read this particular article which mentions about what shailesh exactly said about the connective tissue and the uh, and the neural tissue the ratio of this it matters everywhere from the uh, proximal sciatic to the distal sciatic and this is one which uh, determines the uh, onset the speed the the latency the duration of analysis as well as Uh, as you as you have rightly said about the, uh, the 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 protective effect of the non connective tissue to the neural tissue yes so as you have uh, mentioned cells i think by many of us we do place this injections in the intraneural but it is extra fascicular it is not intra fascicular and it's very difficult and we have re- recently published the um, histological study of uh, 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 human sciatic nerve which we uh, procured just after amputation and we injected at two points one is above the epineurium and below the epineurium and we found histologically how the sub epineural uh, injection it damages the integrity of the nerve so that is the uh, that is the uh, uh, thing in question yeah so uh, we're talking about sub epineural injection sub epineural injection not perineurium not in the fascicles not inside the fascicle the subepineurium injection itself can cause damage to the uh, fascicles what volume you inject because there are so, so many blocks where they inject under the perineurium yeah it still damage because it is an expand cell connective tissue yeah so what volume you inject then whether you use adrenaline whether you use additives there are so many other things probably which can cause a nerve damage surjit there is a question for you Yes, I have seen that. Uh, that is uh, uh, saying that. Uh, can, you, this, can you answer those questions? Yeah, yeah, sir. Uh, the studies have shown uh, that uh, uh, even irrespective of the weight of the patient, irrespective of the nationality of the patient, irrespective of the heap of the patient, the sciatic nerve runs 10 centimeter lateral to the intergluteal sulcus, and this is confirmed by the Franco in many cadaveric studies. so that is the reason that is we are getting uh, this sciatic nerve almost parallel to the intragluteal sulcus and exactly around 10 cm from the intragluteal sulcus 
that is the answer for, for rahul chobe uh, rahul chobe is our uh, uh, is the coordinator uh, he is dr anil porak who is asking you this question okay, okay. and uh, dr vidya ramamurthy so um, my uh, very honest question uh, surjit how many of your patients are very comfortable in uh, when you keep on palpating the intraglutial sulcus and the but and the area of the buttock uh sir i have not seen any uncomfortable patient till now and i already mentioned uh, explained them that this is the thing that i am going to not palpating sir mm-hmm. so i am taken uh, taken a scale and measure the intraglutial sulcus uh-huh. and then take the midpoint and go 10 cm lateral from there okay dr mamta uh, uh, i don't see dr bharti here Yes, sir. She is in emergency case, sir. Hi, hi, sir. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. So, yeah, you, have, you have any questions? Any comments before uh, I uh, share my slide? Yeah, just one question actually. Uh, since uh, you are giving twenty-five uh, ml of dose for sciatics, how long the effect lasts? I just wanted to know. And when when can you uh, when can you mobilize your patients? uh madam i have seen uh, there is up to almost around 4 to 6 hours uh, there is a good uh, uh, block is there uh-huh. and uh, by almost around because i do not use any additive once i have okay. used uh, dexamethasone and block was prolonged for around uh, 48 hours there is a very nightmare for all of us and yes. then from then uh, i have stopped uh, using any additive in my uh, blocks and okay. i have seen that up to 4, four to 6 hours patient is very comfortable and okay. we start uh, that is multimodal analgesia in the post operative period that is before wearing of the block i used to give uh, this paracetamol or diclofenac and okay. then continue as per uh, this is duration of the analgesics so okay. i usually mobilize uh, suppose the patient uh, patient is getting sensation in the anterior part of the thigh thigh if i giving the femoral block and okay. if he can uh, do the push pull of uh, this uh, ankle joint or the finger flexion or extension if he can do then okay. uh, yes it can be mobilized okay but uh, do they even get pain also or the analgesia remains for longer time excuse me madam it did not got the point uh, the motor effect goes off but does the analgesia remain for longer time or uh, you have to start the multimodal because they get pain no no madam we start from the preoperative period that is okay. uh, analgesics then intraoperative period there is a block and postoperative uh-huh. period again that is uh, before wearing of the block we start the analgesics so uh, there I, is a, I, in pain yeah. last code is around you can say around 2 okay. out of 10 and 2 okay okay. okay okay good uh, ashish you have any um, what about ashish's experience on this or if it's not a shyless you can uh, about the duration of analgesics she was asking yeah, yeah. So can I, can i ask Dr. Shailesh, you have to unmute Shailesh. Shail. I usually uh, dexamethasone for all my blocks, at least four milligram dexamethasone. Okay. For at least eight to twelve hours minimum. And uh, it lasts for. And if the patient is very, uh, you know, for pain threshold is very less, I want uh-huh. to prolong the action. Then I use even clonion, uh, clonidine okay. for seventy-five mics plus okay. dexamethasone, and the, it okay. lasts more than twenty-four hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That is what I thought. The patient because, should not be on any beta blockers. That's all I said. Otherwise, yes, yes. Because I have seen. Uh, I mean, since you mentioned the anterior uh, sciatic block, I have been giving anterior sciatic block for quite some time for my TCR patients. But I used to put just ten ml of point two ropivacin without any additive, and still the effect lasted for about twenty four hours. There was no motor blockage. But uh, the analgesia lasted quite, quite uh, for a long time. So I just wanted to know because you are using 0.5 percent bupivacin. So I wanted to know how long it lasts because sometimes it may be actually scary that a patient the limb is completely insensitive, isn't it? You you use so it. I wanted to know. Is it TKR patients? No, uh, it was in past, not now. For TKR, I used to give uh, femoral and sciatic. You know, it was just there, anterior sciatic. <laughs> But uh, not anymore. The protocols have changed definitely. Doctor Mamta, can I upload my slide? Yes, sir. Just trying to share a few things from my side. Okay, sir. Uh, if it's okay for. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sure. Yes, sir. sir. Uh, you can go ahead, sir. Please. 
One minute, I have to see the. Uh, uh, Shailas, do you use um, uh, dexmedrometamidine? No, I don't. I use dexamethasone. Uh -huh. uh, dexmedrometamidine, actually, I used to use even IV, I used to use regularly, but then I used to get food because I don't work in one particular hospital. I go to different hospitals and then I get a call that the patient has uh, pulse rate is low, there is that. So I usually I stop. Okay. Dexmedrometamidine and chromion. If because dex dexmedrometamidine is supposed to be more more better than uh, anything else. Like uh, for example, like uh, uh, it helps. It has got a neuroprotective effect. That's what they have mentioned about it. But then uh, some patients get bradycardia, and then yeah. I get a call that the patient pulse rate is low. It's not coming up with apropos. So, so I stop. Uh, Surjit, what about you of uh, using additives? What additives do you use? Sir, initially in my practice, uh, I used the clonidine. Then mm -hmm. stop. Then I uh, started dexamethasone, then stop. Now I'm using uh, blocks, uh, only blocks, no additives, plus multimodal analysis. Correct. Now, what was the re reason you stopped these adjuvants uh, one by one and then you shifted to other and then now you don't use anything? I agree with you what you're saying, but I just wanted to have uh, know about this. I uh, said, uh, again, the, uh, initially I used clonidine and again, the, the patient has, uh, suppose the elderly patient, patient is on beta blocker, they have a uh, lot of uh, bradycardia, and then uh, we stopped it uh, gradually. And then later in the dexamethasone, we have used and few of the cases we have long motor blockade and long sensory blockade, almost around 48 to 72 hours. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we again that stopped, and we use we have used around two milligram uh, in all the, all the blocks. And then uh, I thought uh, that uh, let's do not use any uh, this additives because with the so sole block, we are getting a good post-op analysis here, as well as with multimodal analysis here. Uh, we have BAS score is around 0 to 2. So we are comfortable with that. And many a times are, uh, we are doing a, this daycare surgery and next day the patient is discharged. So we can block uh, limb, suppose with a paralyzed limb or without any motor, without any sensory, it is very difficult to uh, give discharge to the home. So that is how we have stopped. Sir. Okay. Anybody wants to add apart from... Uh... The, not the panelist, anybody wants to add something? <clears throat> Can I ask a question to Dr. Shailesh? Please, ma'am. Sir, he, he, uh, Dr. Shailesh, you mentioned that uh, you prefer to get the TBL response rather than the common perineal response. So you are uh, removing a needle and uh, putting it more medially. More medially. So ha have you ever uh, experienced puncture of the inferior gluteal artery because uh, it is just medial to the sciatic nerve? So do you feel that Anytime yeah. you might traumatize. Gluteal. Yeah, there is only for the higher blocks, Mansu's approach, parasecral uh, blocks, there you can uh, encounter, you can puncture the inferior gluteal artery. So you have to keep on aspirating and injecting. But there, uh, you know, at a higher level, if you give a block with uh, this thing, you just have hardly half a millimeter medially, if you go, the response changes. Definitely. Okay. You don't have to go that much medially to, you know, uh, to puncture the inferior gluteal artery because it also accompanies the sciatic uh, nerve along through the greater mm -hmm. sciatic nerve. I think uh, Dr. Ma Madhuri mentioned, uh, I mean, asked a very relevant question. But see, Dr. Madhuri, we have been doing uh, infraclavicular blocks uh, in the past with uh, just the PNS, and I have demonstrated you also. Uh, regarding this, the anatomical landmarks, and it is just right uh, uh, on the artery. The needle sits right on the artery, but it always misses the artery. It is just to the lateral cord, posterior cord, and it has never punctured in all these years, whatever I've been doing. It has never punctured the artery. It's quite surprising to me. In fact, when we do this with ultrasound, the infraclavicular, then we see that uh, if we are very close to the artery. Yes. I agree because there is, there is one, at least one article. Please mute, please. Somebody is speaking. Madam, can you keep this mute? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. So this is about the uh, uh, neurostimulation, which uh, you have already mentioned that you, you cannot go below. Uh, this is 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0.28, and uh, you need, need to take take this needle out, and then you have to reinsert the needle. This was with even with ultrasound. The second is about the lateral sciatic block. Uh, this is the the landmark, the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. 
and uh, you have to see the midpoint of that and then you need to go uh, uh, around five to six centimeters below hit the shaft of the femur and then you need to go uh, still more uh, posteriorly and to, to block the, uh, the the sciatic nerve and uh, here the response for what i got was you can see there is eversion and uh, because we are going lateral that could be the um, eversion of the uh, uh, of the uh, foot and you need to get a uh, plantar flexion again uh, but at this point uh, both are engulfed in the sheath so that that is quite uh, uh, okay for uh, uh, to, uh, to inject the local anesthetic coming to the anatomical landmark this is a cadaveric specimen where you find the ischial tuberosity and the the greater trochanter uh, this this was the piriformis muscle and uh, this is the, uh, uh, the the sciatic nerve which comes right uh, between these two and these are the uh, external rotators, what uh, Ganesh has mentioned about the uh, external rotators on which the shadic nerve lies. So that forms the, uh, uh, the floor and the roof is formed by the uh, gluteus maximus. This is a cross section at the level of uh, the, uh, the, the lesser trochanter. You will see from top is the sartorius, the tensor facial atta, these are the vastus uh, muscles which uh, are very close to the uh, femur. On the left corners, find the adductor longus and the brevis. You will find the anterior obturator nerve. Here, you will find the posterior obturator nerve. Can you see these small specks are the nerves? Uh, this is the uh, saphenous nerve, uh, which it departs, and the course you will see that it, it goes like this and then beneath the sartorius, and then it comes here at, at this point. So, it goes like right below the sartorius along with the artery, which accompanies uh, here. You can see the artery as well. Now, Adductor magnus, it forms the uh, roof at some point of the time of the uh, sciatic nerve. And then you will see the sciatic nerve which lies on the, uh, the gluteus maximus. So this is a supine uh, cadaver. We, if we make this prone, this becomes the roof and this becomes the floor. So that's how it changes. So this is uh, not exactly at the proximal, it's more distal, uh, below the level of uh, the lesser trochanter or maybe uh, very close to the gluteal uh, crease. So, uh, this is what I used to give uh, uh, in the past for the uh, total knee replacements. I used to get the needle here, block the saphenous, then lateral, block these two, and then go dead posterior and block the uh, sciatic as well. We don't give it nowadays. It's all abandoned, all those uh, blocks. So uh, this is just a, a caloric analysis of the uh, spread of the uh, latex that we did in uh, grass. This was in... Uh, uh, two years uh, back uh, when I visited the University of Graz Anatomy Department with George Spiegel. Now, here you'll find that we are, uh, we are looking into the uh, posterior aspect of the gluteus maximus, which has been totally exposed. This is all gluteus maximus, which is exposed. You can see the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh. It's quite thick and it's quite visible. I've given already latex by ultrasound, uh, blue latex, which you will see here, a bluish discoloration below the sheath. So this... Uh, posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh is has got a separate sheath from this and when i dissect this you will then see that this is a separate tunnel for the posterior cutaneous nerve so it is still on the proximal side on this side where the where you will find the uh, uh, the, the sacral plexus has already been mentioned here here so that, that is the one which blocks the uh, uh, the posterior cutaneous nerve now, when you remove the sheath, the purple one, this is the purple one, that's the sheath. This is the blue, which is the latex beneath the sheath. And this is the, uh, the nerve which is outside the sheath, the PCNT nerve outside the sheath. And this is the nerve which is continued inside the sheath. So the inside of the sheath is also not, uh, is not stained with the uh, latex. It means that I have placed this below the epineurium and the uh, and this has got a separate sheath and this has got a separate sheath. So it means that you need to go, you go still more higher to block the uh, PCNT. And when I remove the uh, epineurium, you can see that this is the epineurium of the sciatic nerve. Now you can see the latex which is exposed. And that's the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh, which goes the inside the sheath and then it goes outside the sheath. And these are the short external rotators on which the, the sciatic nerve it lies. So that is how is the uh, placement. And this is the intraneural artery, which what you see is the intraneural artery over there. Now, positioning of the catheter, which we did in the mid sciatic in the uh, proximal. Uh, this is uh, a patient to whom the surgeon said that he doesn't mind giving methylene blue dye during uh, a total hip replacement. And this was in Mirage. So I did a catheter and then I injected methylene blue dye. And he demonstrated to me the course of the sciatic nerve. So this is the course of the sciatic nerve. 
and there is a fat uh, which is very uh, uh, very common feature uh, we we find in and we call it as the epineural uh, fat so it's right on the uh, uh, right on the sheath of the the sciatic nerve now when it dissected what i found was that this is the sciatic nerve which uh, has been dissected there is no methylene blue dye here absolutely no methylene blue dye uh, unlike in the cadaver what you found was the whole of the uh, sciatic nerve was stained with the latex and this is the paraneural tissue what shailesh was uh, talking about is the paraneural tissue or what has been demonstrated by uh, several articles by manoj uh, karmakar and he mentions about the paraneural tissue and uh, this is the paraneural tissue which stains the whole with the methylene blue dye and here you can see the uh, the catheter which gets exited at right angles to the sciatic nerve when you uh, insert uh, the catheter at right angles of course it is going to take its own position uh, when you keep on inserting it will it will curl and then it will go either circular or it will go chordal so that is how uh, 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 is the uh, placement of the catheters in uh, in these cases in the proximal sciatic now in the mid sciatic what i did was this is a cadaver is a fresh cadaver actually so you'll find the tissues almost uh, equivalent to what we see in in the in the, in the living uh, this is a catheter entry here and uh, you don't see the catheter now uh, this is the medial side so this is the semi tendinosus and this is the tendon of biceps femoris and this is the sciatic nerve the yellow one and the purple one is the sheath now as i keep we keep on dissecting the uh, semi membranous so you can see the catheter arising exiting this and then going down into the sheath so it's still inside the sheath and there is one more sheath which covers the uh, catheter and the uh, nerve itself so there are multiple sheaths as what shailesh has rightly pointed out there are multiple sheaths here so you can see that this is the medial muscle that's the nerve that's the sheath and you can see the catheter at this point that's the enlarged uh, thing what we what we demonstrated and now you can see multiple sheets so you can see the silver lining here silver arrows so this is one sheet then you can see this colored arrows this is another uh, layer of sheet if you still go down you can see these brownish uh, uh, arrows so uh, this is another uh, sheet over here they are all covering this and then the catheter you can see as we go to set the more load on it comes from medial side and gets stuck up on to the uh, to the lateral side now what i do is uh, i don't have the uh, video uh, uh, running but when you inject the latex the latex goes uh, this way and then it spreads more cordat so this is what we found in uh, our four specimens and this is the latex which was injected here and you can see that this is the tip of the catheter can you see this it's the tip of the catheter very close to the biceps uh, femoris now ganesh mentioned that biceps femoris uh, on the top of it lies the posterior cutaneous nerve we don't see the posterior cutaneous nerve here so what did we did we did was we dissected to have a look at it now we can see how the latex sheet engulfs the whole of the uh, sciatic nerve and this is 10 ml so that's the 10 ml that uh, ganesh was mentioning and if you give 20 ml uh, as shailesh and uh, ashit mentioned then the spread is still more so that is how the spread of the uh, local anesthetic should be occurring now you will see that we dissected the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and you can see the artery along it mother mentioned about the inferior gluteal artery so that was the inferior gluteal artery there but then it branches and then this is a branch of the inferior gluteal artery which comes along with it so if you deposit a local anesthetic right on the top of posterior cutaneous uh, the biceps femoris this particular nerve uh, can be blocked again you can see the sheath you can see below the sheath is the latex and below the latex is the sciatic nerve and uh, the the uh, latex it hugs or engulfs the uh, sciatic nerve at that point and here you can see the uh, the catheter which is filled with the uh, latex again uh shailesh uh, in this particular you can see this is uh, our surgeon dr atul patel who dissected this for us uh, he quickly called me into the ot and he said that we have got a um, bifid sciatic nerve you can see that proximally so sometimes if you place the needle maybe here somewhere you may not be able to get the twitch and that is the reason why with pns you need to go keep on going uh, either medial or lateral and Uh, i do not have the it but i it's mentioned in my book about the uh, trifurcation of the uh, sciatic nerve the proximal not the distal is mentioned in the book in the literature but the proximal is not mentioned so this is what we find um, bifurcation and trifurcation i had uh, two cases one was in cadaver and one in this uh, live case so uh, shailesh i would like to ask you uh, here what uh, how would you um, uh, feel like if you don't get any response at this point would you apply ultrasound 
Yeah, definitely. See, dual block is any time much better than individual. You know, the advantage of uh, ultrasound is uh, definitely to locate the nerve properly, and advantage of the PNS is to prevent intraneural injection. I definitely would like to uh, have a dual block if I have both available. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I have to ask you with the ultrasound, with the hydro dissection, can you make out whether you are uh, intraneural or perineural or this? Because now with the newer needles, eco-friendly needles, you can even see the tip properly. Yes. So is it possible? Because I am not as experienced as you with the ultrasound guided uh, this thing. Uh, yes, yes, you are absolutely correct, uh, Shailesh. That is what I wanted to ask Ganesh. She mentioned about you have to confirm intraneural injection. So, is there any study which mentions the volume of test dose for intraneural injection, Ganesh? Uh, volume of test dose. Yeah. Uh, no, I am not aware of that volume of test dose. But uh, you can make out intraneural injection that while injecting, you should see the uh, uh, any apparent swelling in the nerve. If yeah. there is a swelling in any part of nerve, you should withdraw needle yes. and then again uh, go for uh, injecting drug with small, small volumes. Yeah. So that is what I wanted to ask you. You mentioned about the increase in swelling. So how much increase in expansion of the nerve in how much percent? Uh, uh, you can roughly say more than 15%, 1-5%. Okay. So that is regarding the um, uh, expansion. And uh, so second is about the volume of drug. Because you, may, you because when you say intraneural and you have to see for the expansion, fifteen uh, percent. So for that fifteen percent, how much volume you have injected? That's very important. And if it and, and that's going to cause damage to the nerve. That's also another important thing. So volumes of around 0.5 ml uh, have been uh, determined by uh, Bijelson okay. in intraneural uh, studies on median nerve. So I think Ganesh. Uh, uh, the other day I demonstrated the uh, intercostal brachial nerve. Avinash was there and Nitin was there. Yes. And you could see, uh, you said that the nerve looks more bigger. So that was really an intraneural uh, injection of the intercostal brachial nerve, what we did. Yes. It was inadvertent. And so I withdrew the needle tip and then injected around it. Yes. You, you got it, no, that day? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, uh, uh, Ganesh, about this uh, and uh, about this, uh, Shailesh. Is this a contraindication? How would you go for this? Uh, he's coming come for above knee amputation. Yes, uh, bed sores at the site of injection and above knee amputation means you, you need to go proximally. Yeah, but proximally uh, also he has cellulitis, everything. Yes, yes, yes. Everything yes. Here. Yes, yes. We should so have. Looking at the picture, I think it is, uh, even on blood thinners, there's a lot of. Uh, is, uh, is the patient on blood thinners? No, no, no. There are bed sores, definitely. Yeah. But looking at the picture, I think the patient may be on blood thinners also. So. Okay. So these are the kind of patients that we get where uh, then uh, is, the, is the posterior static now contraindicated in this case? The patient is very critically ill cannot uh, withstand a spinal or an epidural, uh, no general anesthesia. So what would be basically a risk-benefit ratio you have to calculate. Okay. Yes. There is actually some uh, space at uh, some uh, infragluteal level. Actually, at the gluteal crease, uh, we can try with ultrasound. Yeah, infragluteal level is looks quite clear. So would, would you still uh, want to uh, work on this? So this, what about your technique in this case? Uh, sir, it is difficult to comment because uh, again the infragluteal area that is seems to be very clear, uh-huh. but uh, the sup- the gluteal and the supragluteal area seems to be sir infective. So I'll not go there. Uh-huh. Infragluteal will be the choice, sir. Okay, so the choice would be more of infragluteal. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, this would be the. Uh, I think I had uh, one more uh, just slide uh, which mentions about the. Uh, sir, can I comment on this picture? Uh, please, please. Sir, I just wanted to rather it's a question or a suggestion maybe if this patient is posted for below knee amputation anyway the limb is go- not going to be salvaged. Mm-hmm. So it, is it really a contraindication to give a nerve block here? Uh, panelists, you can answer first. Uh. 
the actually uh, though the limb is not going to say but uh, the uh, this area is infected no bed sores are there so we can uh, additionally uh, there are we are increasing the chances of infection at proximal level okay i feel there is a world of difference between below knee amputation and above knee amputation the process is hello yes yes sir no, the process is fits much better in below knee amputation patients so whatever limb you can salvage has to be salvaged whatever okay. amount so yeah. you um, yeah, I do also agree, sir. I also agree because yes, uh, uh, though it is going to be amputated, because still we cannot insert the needle through the infective area, and we cannot uh, infect the nerve tissues and the deeper tissues. Yes, that is going to lead to more problems. Actually, uh, when uh, yeah, correct. What you say is exactly correct. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, jeopardize with the uh, infection, uh, and uh, it might lead to further infections in uh, in future of the of the shattered nerve. I agree with this. Exactly, sir. Yeah. So, uh, just one last slide. Is it okay? Uh, or do we have time or no? I don't yes, know. Sir. Yes, sir. You can go ahead, sir. Yeah. So, just one la last uh, this thing. Uh, what I wanted to upload. Can't is... see your screen. Sandeep. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, I have not yet shared anything. Okay. I'm just trying to share this. So, uh, uh, this is... Uh, a block, um, Ganesh. Yes, sir. Your uh, this is your this thing from two zero one six. I could extract from one of my files. Okay. So just look at uh, this thing. What you had done in the past and uh, what you will be doing now. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's an initial high stimulating current uh, that we can avoid because we don't see anything. So. So after placing the needle at this corner pocket, you have been doing that since the past, which you are doing it today also, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have not changed that. So we have, see you have been drawing the needle and now you are inserting that just below the uh, shattic nerve there. And yes. then you inject, uh, the needle tip is not visualized, but when you inject your local anesthetic, that's a safe placement. That's perfect placement, isn't it? So that is one thing. Now, second is you are going, it's an outer pocket and you're trying to go below this and see you have raised another sheath here. Can you see that? Yes, sir. You have raised another sheath and the volume of local anesthetic is now going around here. So what I wanted to ask is at this point is, would this be enough local anesthetic which surrounds this? Can you see that? It surrounds yes. everything. Yes. So, uh, would it be enough? for Yes, the yes, yes it, it would be enough, sir. Uh, what about you, Shailesh? How much volume have you injected? Yeah, so this was around uh, 7 ml, which was injected. Okay. So yeah, it is going uh, medially as well as laterally. So I think this should be enough. Uh, uh, Ganesh mentioned about that in the literature. Uh, the uh, duration would, wouldn't be good or the analytic effect would be good. So I think you you would disagree, Ganesh, with this, What whatever volume you have injected. Okay. No, okay. Isn't it? Yes, it should be at least 10 ml. At least 10 ml, yes. Yes. So next, what happens? You look, look at it now. See, you have, you have, you have, we, have, we have seen that. I was there doing this block. Now you go on the top of it. Can you see that? You're going on the top of it. Now, Shailesh, this what you had injected yeah. here. This must be yeah. below the sheet. This okay. one. And yeah. this below the sheet. Yeah. This is the paranormal tissue. The whole thing, Correct. this is below the uh, paraneurium. So probably we are not inside the epineurium, but as you say, some of the uh, some of the sheets that have been lifted up like that. Okay. Yeah. And then now we can see if he still keeps on injecting there, he comes out a bit and then he tries to go again beyond that on the, onto the other side. As you said, on the middle side, you had asked this question on the middle side. So now you can see that this spread is one, this spread is second, and this spread is the third spread. What he what what he what he will be doing? So in, like pardon? Almost like a donut, I said. Yeah. So more than a donut, he, it's almost like uh, he, it has been angled from all the sides. Yeah. Oh, it started again. Sorry. So uh, this is how uh, the uh, the block was given. Uh, this was in two zero one six. 
uh, and uh, this is also a good uh, demonstration uh, except that i'm not sure whether you need to be poking uh, on all the sides trying to get it but anyway we do with the penis also you, you poke it so many times yeah but when you see the see the nerve with ultrasound there's no reason why you should keep on poking but that's a good spread which is very close to the nerve and the other spread now the, you can see the same spread the same patient the same spread we scan high high up and high up and uh, you you can now see that there is there will be oops what happened okay so you can see this is the sciatic nerve the whole of the sciatic nerve and as we scan bit below you will see there is a bifurcation of these two there will be one nerve here and one nerve here so as you can see that bifurcation so this nerve and this nerve can you see that yes two components so that is probably the tibial and this was the peroneal component so you mentioned about the uh, uh, about the subluteal space that's not the subluteal space that's the local anesthetic which has gone in yes yeah. so uh, i think i know i don't remember seeing the subluteal space many times i don't know the incidence i have not seen any articles uh, regarding that but as sandeep has mentioned uh, let's see about the deep uh, gluteal space so dr mamta that's all i have from my side thank you very much uh, dr mamta for giving me this opportunity and uh, excellent presentation by all uh, everybody of you uh, shailesh ganesh and surjit i think you should uh, uh, you should be uh, 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 publishing this soon Yes, sir. I am looking for one thousand cases, and uh, soon I am going to publish don't, it. Don't wait for one thousand cases, uh, Surjit. <laughs> I think five hundred is a uh, uh, six hundred is a good uh, uh, number of patients. Okay. I sir. think you should go ahead with this uh, publication. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely sure about this. Okay. So, dear madam, there are questions in the chat box. Yes, sir. So. Uh, Yeah. How easy is it to add sodium bicarb? Nobody as it adds adds, adds, uh, adds nowadays that just increase the latency of block and just with may, uh, maybe few minutes uh, to potentiate the effect. That is one thing. Uh, does not use dexamethasone. I don't use dexamethasone at all. Uh, that's uh, I have mentioned it the last time. Yes, sir. I need for sir. I don't uh, use it for uh, the reasons mentioned that. Uh, 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 For the reason mentioned that we, I have to use a preservative free, please show article. So I will I will post your article. You can uh, give me your email ID. I'll post you that articles. K wire misses the arteries. Ganesh says K wire misses the arteries. Two our needles must be missing the arteries similarly. <laughs> Ganesh has a point here. Raul <laughs> sir, thank you very much for posting those uh, questions uh, and uh, coordinated coordinating this uh, very successfully. Thank you, sir. is the one who's uh, behind all these things uh, prac webinars the prac uh, conferences and uh, um, always motivates all of us salam sir permission of all members of the house now i conclude the academic session it was indeed great wonderful informative and lively session before saying goodbye to all i would like to convey vote of thanks i thank our speakers dr shailesh mulgaonkar and dr ganesh bhong for very informative wonderful and amazing presentation i appreciate your contribution for this endeavor sir i thank all my panelists dr surjit giri dr ashit mehta dr divan sir dr bharti adhe madam for their expert opinion and lively discussion it was dr parak sanjiti who was master behind mastermind behind this uh, webinar i uh, extend my heartfelt thanks to dr parak sanjeeti he, he is always supporting and uh, always encouraging for this academic enhancement and widening the horizon i thank dr ashok sham sir and dr Ra and mr rahul chobe sir for their valuable support and contribution and encouragement for this webinar i thank dr divan who is our academic chief for who is uh, the real mastermind for this webinar for his valuable contribution i thank all my colleagues uh, my head of department dr bharti madam for their encouragement and support i thank all my viewers for patient listening thank you all we shall be announcing our next webinar soon good night have a nice weekend
थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू वंस अगेन एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरीबॉडी थैंक्स एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू